Guys, hello. We're gonna do a quick altar of hope guide. The most important upgrade for the altar. Let's not waste time and go straight to it. Once you pick up the chapter that you want, you're gonna pick your heroes and then comes the altar of hope. So let's do it in order. On a crossroads, we're gonna pick a character. Now what's very important? At the start, you won't have subclasses available. Now you need to unlock them in the altar of hope, okay? So all of them are wanderers, okay? When you hover over here. If you reach the second in with them, you receive one candle per hero. That's how you should play, especially if you're a beginner, you should not focus on leveling up subclasses at the start, you should only focus on candles. The entire point about this latest update and how the entire game will work on a full release are candles, or better to say, gaining hope to upgrade with candles. The only thing that you need to pay attention to is the positive and negative quirks for your wonders. The best things that you can get are Breacher, Flat Crit uh, Quirks, Flat Damage Quirks. Negative Quirks, you can always remove them in a hospital. You're gonna have resources this time with this update. There's a lot of resources. I ended up chapter rich with two 300 relics and two 300 bubbles. It's an easier game now. That's maybe even a bad thing, but everyone can play now. I'm not saying how they're not gonna up the difficulty on the full release, but right now, at least for me, this is like five times easier game than it was on a previous patch, Oblivion's Ingress. Here we are at the Altar of Hope, the main update, the main change, and the guide will consist only out of Altar of Hope upgrades. What's most important, what you should aim for as beginner or if you already spent hours and hours in the game, it doesn't matter, same applies for everyone. Here we can level up the Interpid Coast, the working fields, the living Art city, and, will carry the day. and the timeless wood. Recollection are all the items that you unlocked on your previous runs, including currency, combat items, in items, trinkets, explanation for everything so you can actually check what does what. So the recollection is not important, it's there for info. We're gonna start with the Interpede Coast and the number one and the most important upgrade in the entire game is Journey. All candles that you earn in the first few runs and you need 96 candles, they all gonna go into Journey until you max it out. Reason? Very simple. You gain more loot, you gain more inventory slots. Okay, it's extremely annoying with inventory. You need inventory slots or you're gonna stop on every minute organizing your inventory. This is by far upgrade number one that you should max out. Now, as far as resourcefulness goes, the only thing that you need for the start is to put five candles into wealth, okay? So you receive 24 relics and 20 bubbles on the start of every run. It's gonna make life a bit easier at the start. The rest of the upgrades you should upgrade later on. Not now, definitely not now. Only this, relics and bubbles. So this is how it should look like after like 10 hours of playtime. Maxed out journey, five candles into wealth, into resourcefulness, better to say. A renown, Renown is cosmetics, how your stagecoach is gonna look like once you upgrade everything that exists in the game, that's when you're gonna go with Renown, because it's completely not important, just forget about it, play the game without it. Once you don't know what to do with your life, then you're gonna spend candles into Renown. Yes, companionship is coming soon, companionship is probably going to be the most important upgrade after the journey. Because I guess companionship will up relations and how everything works in relations. And we know that the most important thing during combat in Darkest Dungeon 2 are relations. Okay, how good your heroes tolerate each other. That depends out of everything. They can stress heal, they can heal HP, they can attack when you attack, they can defend when you defend, they can give buffs and debuffs. Absolutely insane. So companionship, probably when it comes out, you're gonna mix it out after the journey. The Infernal Flame is also 
here for the night trance and you're gonna need to put 25 candles into the infernal flame for the night trance uh this is the last upgrade okay you need to learn how to play the game and then you can go for the night trance and after all, there's not enough quirks for night runs and so on. I would wait for the full game release for the Infernal Plane to even consider upgrading it, of course. So, from the Interpret Coast, Journey, Max It Out, Resourcefulness, 5 Candles, up we go to the next one. The Working Fields and how you should play in the Working Fields. Uh, basically, you want to go one point into everything. Okay, on every next run. If you know what you're doing, you're gonna max it out as soon as possible. Okay, of course, after the journey, you want to max out everything here. Why? Very simple. You need trinkets on a map, you need combat items, you need in items, and you need stagecoach items that your runs will go smoother and easier. Alright. But the proper way, for beginners especially, is to put one point into everything, okay? To unlock one by New one. Now we got one trinket, then we got one combat item, and that's how you spend only four candles. So you can put the rest of the candles in journey, okay? So one of each. Only one of each. Every like this. twinkling recollection is another implement and at our it. disposal. After we go, four candles on it. The living city is where you unlock your characters. I would recommend you start with Highwayman, Men at Arms, Grave Robber, and Plague Duct. They're perfectly fine to roll you for the next 10 hours. Of course, you need to chase hero shrines if you're a beginner, and you need to chase candles on a map. So, the most important things on a map, and you have my map guide on the channel, nothing changed there, they only added candles. Where you see a candle and a hero shrine, that's where you're gonna roll. That's everything you need to know about the map right now. And as far as hero upgrades go, you start with these four. They're perfectly fine. You do not need to unlock Chester, Leper, Occultist, Bounty Hunter, and so on. No need at all. First, you finish up Journey. Then you unlock some trinkets and so on. You put like 20 points into everything, okay? Here. And then you want to unlock jester leper for the start okay because of the stress heal self stress heal and so on and then you want to unlock cultist runaway and hellion you need to put i believe two or four candles to unlock a character if you have one solid run where you have like 20 30 candles unlock them all at once and the next important thing is to unlock their subclass okay you need their subclasses to roll. So every character has a subclass. I'll tell you what you unlock for what and how you should optimize your builds from subclasses. For the highwayman, a rogue, sharp shot, and yellow hand are all great. You have my guides for every subclass in the game since now to unlock, they don't roll randomly, okay? And my advice, you do it once you have a lot of candles gathered from the Wanderers, because I guess a rogue doesn't give you a candle when you reach the end. Alright, so, be careful about every subclass, make sure that you have enough candles, and make sure that you have upgraded the Interpeed Coast, the Working Fields, and then you can start unlocking subclasses. You need one subclass per character for the start, like for example, you unlock Bedai, you unlock Sergeant, you unlock Rogue, you unlock Surgeon, okay? And then you can consider unlocking better subclasses, or in other words, the best subclass would be Alchemist for the Plague Doctor, uh, Venom Drop for Grave Rubber, Vanguard for Men at Arms. All equally good on a, all three subclasses are equally good on a highwayman. Ravager is great on a Hellion if you want to tank with Hellion. Already gave builds, full builds on a channel. Carcass is absolutely crazy on, as a tank Hellion. Runaway, the best one to grab would be 
orphan by far, okay? But that's a long way off, 34 candles. There's a lot of farming here. For the Jester, the best one to upgrade would be Intermezzo, and that's also 34 candles away. For the Leper, everything works. Poet, Monarch, and Tempest. Tempest is the closest, go for the Tempest. Once you upgrade, this still over here. For a Cultist, you need Warlock. Basically, the rest of the subclasses are tricky to play. And Bounty Hunter, the latest edition, he completely sucks. He only stays for one map. Okay, he's mastered all of his skills. He doesn't have relations, which means that you can ruin relations among your squad. Okay, and once you reach the map, he's out. And he takes away four candles for you. So, Bounty Hunter should be the last upgrade. And I would say you should upgrade Bounty Hunter the last and then you should go for Renown. That's how stupid it is right now. Because he only remains on one map. He means nothing. Okay. He can ruin more than he can help. The more Timeless to to Wood. To Timeless Wood is where you blinded. unlock memories. And this is... Timeless Wood is a mega late game. Uh, if your heroes survive the chapter, you kill the boss, now you like their quirks, positive quirks, you like their stats, you like everything about them. This is how they remember who they were on the previous run. And when you start chapter 2, once you're successful in chapter 1, they remember and they're stronger from the start. This is a great mechanic, but for a full release, not now in early access. Okay, because you need all five chapters for this to work. So, my recommendation here, just go with it, maybe, you know how you want to go, you, you want to upgrade everything I told you, journey, and resourcefulness, all items, all trinkets, everything needs to be unlocked here, you want to unlock all heroes, okay, that's the order, then you want to unlock uh, bounty hunter, then you wanna unlock uh, Timeless Wood, everything here, to the max, and then you want to unlock... Uh, it's the list. That's everything there is, in order, what you should unlock. And I told you about that little trick where you pick one out of each. So you receive those items at the start, every time, okay, and you unlock slowly. The most important thing when you play is to know when to quit. I don't know when to quit, I already had these successful runs without upgrades. And victory upgrade will bring you 70 candles. Okay. I did it twice, so that's why I leveled up this fast. Um, what do I recommend? I recommend going for the second in, maybe the sluice, if it gives the sluice map half a map as I call it, and then quit, collect hope, go back, upgrade, like I told you, max out your stagecoach, max out items so they can roll, and go again for the second, day. and again, and again, and again, okay, you're gonna need 20 hours, you're gonna need 10 hours to upgrade all, all that's important for the start, if you know how to win, I would not recommend that, only to those that have experience in the game. Those that don't have experience, just go for the safe route. You can grab like 15 to 20, 25 candles in an hour or two, while you can grab 70 candles in 3 or 4 hours if you are victorious. So count it. I told you how things stand. That will be all for Darkest Dungeon 2 Altar of Hope guide. As I make progress, I'll make sure to make an ultimate guide now. And of course, with all classes, all subclasses, everything is already on the channel, okay? But I'll make one compilation out of everything, including the map, hero compositions, all builds, all subclasses, everything in the Altar of Hope. You've got boss fights on the channel. You got all maps on the channel, all mini-bosses, all encounters, what they do, what you should do, in what 
order you should play and so on. Now it's an easier game, okay, than it used to be. I pray to God they're gonna make it harder, but that's life. I hope you'll have fun with Darkest Dungeon 2, it's slowly becoming a very, very good game. <laughs>